Hello, everybody. I'm a rainbow. Yeep's Hide and Seek is a terrific game. Even better, they gave you a camera app that is all kinds of terrific. It's iPhone only, but I went out and got myself an iPhone just so I could use it. It is that good. I really like this thing. Now, I've got some tips that I hope will help you. You can use this uh, app all by itself just on a phone or an iPad and to record in-game without you being in there. It's very useful that way. You can use it standalone or hands-free in-game. It'll give you a first-person or a third-person perspective. Also, you can use it with the camera pack, which gives you a drone. I'm filming on that now. It gives you a standalone camera. It gives you a selfie stick. All great options for content creators. So it is just terrific that way, and I really like it. Also, if you had some trouble with installation, I've got that at the end of the video. If you want to check that out, do it. Otherwise, I figure most people have gotten this far and they've got it installed. But if you're having trouble, go to the end of the video, walk through that, and hopefully I can get you up and running. In the meantime, let's jump in and get this started. Once you've got the app open on your phone, this is what you will see. You'll be in the last location you were in and... To move around, just put your finger anywhere on the open space in the phone and move it around. And you will see this changes the attitude or the angle of the floating camera, which is actually a little floating head people can see. And if you actually want to move it, the joystick over on the left, push forward, push back, left, right. see all of those and that's how you can move it around and the little circle that you see right there if you press on that that's kind of a quick jump point and you'll see those around and this one takes you right to the board so you can see who's on the board and if we scroll around there's some back there in the back it's a little crowded right now kind of jumps us right there to that entrance so this saves you a little bit of time if you're trying to get out and about and, and see things now, you can move this around all by yourself if you want, try to follow people, or if you press the little eyeball right there, you'll see everybody that's in the lobby, and you can just pick one, and the game will start following them around. And in this case, I'm in a third-person view, and it'll do its best to follow them around. Or, if you click on the little gear icon, which it says shoulder cam, let's check that. We are now in a first person view and we're following that same person. And you can change it any time to different people. And you can change the view at any time. And get my fat finger on there. There we go. So, Oop, he's leaving the lobby. I don't want to leave that lobby. All right. And that's basically how you do it. So it's very interesting. It's easy to use, very intuitive. Now, the last thing I haven't covered is the little exit up there in the corner. If you log out, you will have to log back in and re-input your uh, passcode that you had. So normally I just shut, I don't log out. I just shut the app off. What you do is up to you. Just letting you know. And I don't think a lot of people realize that you can still use the camera without the camera pack. And when you do that, essentially you've got two points of view. One is the first person view that I'm in right now. And when you've got that, if you look up on your screen, you'll see a big red recording icon, which means it's recording either your first person view or the third person view. And to get that third person view up, all you have to do is select the little gear icon, hit the slider, and then you'll be in third person view. Surfing on air, oh yeah. All right, the interesting the bad thing about the camera pack is even if I'm just recording on the app like it is right now, if I grab any of those devices and put them out there, they will take over. So that perspective will change immediately. You'll see the brink, 
blinking red light on the camera and you'll know it's working. And the cool thing with the drone is it will follow you around. So where I'm going, it's going and it's following. So, and you kind of get that perspective and you can see it's up high right now, looking down on me. But if I grab, say I grab another drone and I drop it in low, it will sort of maintain this position relative to me rather than going up into the sky. So I think that's very interesting. See, so it'll sit there and track and it'll kind of work like a steady cam as it tracks you from that position, okay? Once you get far enough away, then it will start to follow you again. So let's see how this goes. So, and you see that it followed me that whole time and I just grab it, grab another one. If I don't like the perspective, drop it in, drop it in a little bit lower. All right, let's shift over to the, to the single cam. The interesting thing about this is you cannot point it at yourself. You can't turn your wrist enough to get there, to look at it. So you have to point it and shoot, but it will stay where you put it. So if you want a fixed perspective so that you can watch what's going on, you just set it there and then go. And then the cool thing is I can just grab another camera app, throw it out there, and then it, it shifts. So the video can shift with me. So there's a lot of tools in that that you can use. Now, let's try the selfie stick right here. It will sit where you point it, all right? You can also point it at yourself. It's almost impossible to turn around because whenever you grab it, you have to grab it by the hand but you can point it where more or less where you want it and have that go. All right, and the last camera is the neck cam, which is kind of weird. You put it on your neck. I'm not sure that I like this at all because it kind of follows you. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Oh, oh, so I have no idea what that looks like. Like I said, this is my least favorite camera. Uh, of all of them, I think I like the drone the best because it just keeps uh, keeps tracking you no matter what you're doing. Did I lose the drone? Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't even keep track of that guy. All right, everybody, I have explained all the different modes of camera operation, and that should be everything that you need to know for that. All right, everybody, I'm going to say bye for most of you, and uh, thanks for watching. And if you need help, watch this next part and see if I can help you with setup. To install the app, you're going to need an iPhone and website link, but you're also going to need your code from the lobby. So just go in, press show code, and remember the four numbers that pop up. Obviously, I'm not going to give you mine, but you'll have four numbers that are unique to you. On your phone, go ahead and open the App Store. And you're going to do a search for Test Flight. Once you find Test Flight, it's the one with a little propeller. Go ahead and download and install that. It's free. Once it's installed, open it up. Now you can allow or not, that's up to you. Go ahead and hit continue. And then you're gonna open up your browser. It doesn't have to be Chrome, can be any of them. And you wanna do a search for that URL. It will show up. So you're just gonna go down and click where it says join the beta. When that comes up, go ahead and hit install. Once it installs, go ahead and open it up. Just hit next. Start testing. You can not track or allow up to you
And when the app comes up, that's what you'll see. And you can use the app just like that. But if you want to link it to your quest, that's where those code comes in. And you're going to enter those four digits and your meta username. Then hit link to quest and it'll say account linked. Now all you need to do is relaunch the app. So stop it, restart it. And when it comes up, you should be good to go. I've got one last tip for you. If you're recording, the direction you're holding your phone makes a difference when you start recording. So if you're in portrait mode and you start recording in portrait mode, this is what you'll get. You can turn it into landscape, but it will continue to record in portrait mode. If you're in landscape mode when you start recording, this is what you'll get. The nice thing about this is it's already fully sized. So the big difference is, are you planning to put it on, say, TikTok or create a short, or are you going to put it on YouTube or something else that use landscape? That makes a difference, and it's up to you which one you use, but I just wanted to make you aware. All right, everybody, that's my last tip. Y'all be good. Take care.